Welcome back to the Star Stable YouTube documentary. You are now watching part two. We left off just as we were about to get into the new ambassador program introduced in February of 2017. Let's resume. Something notable in the Star Stable content creator scene of 2017 was Star Stable introduced the ambassador program. It would seem that the company themselves were finally giving recognition and rewarding content creators through this program after five years of the game's international debut. It seemed great that they were finally giving content creators this stage, since for the better half of five years, Star Stable Online YouTubers and Instagrammers were basically doing free promotion for the game through their content. Now, what were the rewards that came with being an ambassador? From what I have seen, all you really get is some star coins, which is a big reward in itself, seeing as Star Stable is too stingy, they give out star coin codes much anymore, and maybe some packages with Star Stable gear in it. I'm so jealous. I want the pencils so bad. Now, what frustrates me is that the compensation is low, but the ambassador's impact is much more larger. Let's take a YouTuber like Elizabeth Riverland, for example. Elizabeth Riverland started her YouTube career in summer of 2015. She quickly rose to popularity in the community's eye, for all good reason too. Her content was very creative and she had very well-timed humor, as well as a distinct style that separated her from a lot of other YouTubers at that time. Over the course of 8 years on YouTube, she garnered over 60,000 subscribers and even to this day is considered one of the titans of Star Stable YouTube. There are hundreds of players she influenced to play the game. I've met multiple people who have said that they joined the game because of her videos. There are even people that went as far as buying the same horses as her and naming them the same name, dressing the same as her, trying to get in the same club as her. There was an obsession. And she wasn't the first or last YouTuber to receive this kind of reception. In my opinion, she deserved way more from, from Star Stable Online than to just hold an ambassador status. Her influence, much like Alice Winterbells and Violet Flower Gardens, was serious. She was among the first six to be chosen for Star Stable's ambassador program in February of 2017. Something to note is that she mentioned in one of her previous Q&A videos that she had to private her famous Star Stable Online series, Storm's Life, during her ambassador titleship because it featured the wild horse glitch. This was before becoming a wild horse was optional in Star Stable Online. Players previously would have to go into the data, before it was encrypted, and delete all of the files relating to pants, temporarily. And once you log back in, your rider, your rider was invisible. We'll get back into why this is relevant later. I felt the need to mention Elizabeth Riverland during this part of the documentary, because if I am doing a full analysis on the entire history and background of Star Stable Online YouTube, I need to mention all of the greats, especially since I have always been a fan of Ellie. Elizabeth's story is a great example of what it's like to almost feel restricted to a brand. A common theme that every YouTuber of every genre faces, and it even goes beyond the YouTube scene. To be clear, imagine if you're a singer, and one of your music videos blows up, and in that video you're wearing sunglasses, and on the cover you're wearing sunglasses, etc, etc. Everyone is now going to associate you with those sunglasses, and if you were to take them off, then you're almost unrecognizable. When you are in a community like Star Stable Online, a horse game marketed mostly towards children, your audience will mostly be children, especially if you're in the limelight, the face of the game almost. Having to uphold a certain image, a certain set of expectations from the community is exhausting. Elizabeth was not the only Star Stable content creator to go through this. And there are still content creators out there that probably face the same challenge. Ellie was just brave enough to talk about it. You are expected to be at your fullest. You have to maintain the image that your audience perceives you as for as long as your channel is standing. Most children don't really know how to acknowledge you outside of who you are on YouTube. Their intentions are well placed, but it creates a fear that if you were to be authentic, then you'd be rejected. The label that has been forced upon you has no sign of leaving anytime soon and you have to give the audience what they want. In my personal experience, this leads to burnout. I would never wish this sort of anxiety upon anyone as it is extremely exhausting in a place where you're supposed to be celebrating your achievements and success. I don't want to speak for Elizabeth. 
This is just what I have taken from her speaking out on what it was like to be in such a big spotlight. Elizabeth's legacy extends far beyond just being the quote-unquote frog queen. She single-handedly recorded, voiced, and edited weekly videos all by herself, which is no easy task. If you were a fan of Elizabeth, I'm sure we all can agree that our days got a lot brighter when we saw an upload from her. This is in no way pressuring Ellie to come back to SSO YouTube at all. She has made her decision to delete her channel and that is it. None of us have any right forcing her to come back and we should all respect her decision to move on to bigger and brighter things. She is now a very talented writer and her writing is actually the reason why I make these scripts in complete detail. About a year ago, I just made bullet points of what I wanted to talk about, but after reading her work, it made me enjoy sitting down and writing out my thoughts. I've never been much of a reader and that has put a stain in my vocabulary, but because of her, I put a little extra thought into my videos and look back on my script with pride. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. I will link her writing Instagram in the description below. All I ask, if Elizabeth contributed to your Star Stable Online journey, please consider giving her a follow. She gave so much to us, and I think we could all give her a little something back by supporting her in her next steps of life. We're pretty far into this documentary now. Take some time to take a breath. Because the further we go, the more we get into the core of the issue, the truth and what goes on behind being such a public figure. We left off in early 2017, where Star Stable had introduced a program that helped Star Stable YouTubers be recognized by the company for all their hard work, and even be given a boost in the public's eye by rewarding them these titles. And I had mentioned how it seemed as if these content creators' impact was massive, but the compensation from the company was overall pretty low. When you take a step back, you realize that these content creators almost don't even need the title for their own gain. Yeah, there are probably some ambassadors whose online presence may need a boost by the company. But for the most part, it would be better if Star Stable Online just introduced a program that elevated YouTubers or Instagrammers who were just starting out, rather than putting a creative restraint on existing giant content creators. Like we see with Elizabeth, and how she had to private her series because it featured the wild horse glitch when she held her ambassador title. But the lines between being an ambassador and breaking the terms of service become blurred. Of course, the ambassador program doesn't only exist for the company to reward content creators for all their hard work over the past 11 years. It is said that it is supposed to be a bridge that connects the community to the company. The ambassadors take feedback from the general community and then pass it on to the com company. So are the ambassadors like employees then? They're doing just about as much work in the social department as a real employee would. Well, yes and no. They sign a contract and have direct communication with the game directors, but in terms of the compensation, there is no real compensation. No real money is involved, but if you want to count having free access to the newest horse breeds intended for promotional gain as real compensation, then yeah. I mean, I can't say it's bad compensation. Seeing how Star Stable Online pumps out horses at an overwhelming rate, it has gone unjustifiably expensive. If everyone in the community is bending over backwards trying to get into the ambassador club to get all of the new horses for free, well, I think you can see where the company's priorities lie. Still, the amount of work that ambassadors have put in for the past six years, even if I don't personally like some of them, their compensation should be equal to all that they have done for the game. Horse game popularity and free pixel ponies are not going to help you pay your bills or feed yourself. But most of the ambassadors actually don't have to worry about earning money to help feed themselves or pay bills. Why? Well, remember when I said that most of us were only kids, creating our YouTube channels and making videos that would inevitably, inevitably blow up and help promote the game? Most of the YouTubers you know and love today all started out as mere teenagers sometimes even younger. That still rings true today, as most ambassadors are not even legal adults yet. And when such a big company puts children on a pedestal, things get out of hand pretty quickly. A lot of controversy starts to spark, and players can sometimes feel like their issues are not being handled seriously. We are taught to respect and admire ambassadors, as they hold a pretty big title. But who they are under the badge can contrast to who they portray in the public eye. This is of course not the case for all ambassadors, and I don't want to generalize the entire program, but
but I can say that I personally cannot trust them with my problems regarding the game at all. I mean, I can barely trust the developers when regarding my issues with the game. How am I supposed to trust a peer of mine who up until a few months ago was just a player like me? With a bug that is literally preventing me from continuing a quest. This is just taken from my personal experience and having watched the program undergo major changes since the beginning of its existence. I'm sure ambassadors have done some really great things for the community, but seeing the repetitive layer of false positivity they have to perform in order to stay on the company's good side, I'm sure you could understand why it's like talking to robots. Long story short, the program to me just seems more or less like a joke now. When it was first introduced, I had major respect for everyone who was chosen because at the time, many of my favorite YouTubers were rewarded with the status. Especially after years of mostly radio silence from Star Stable Online honoring these creators that were giving the game free promotion. Most of who were chosen, like I said, had a big following of over 10,000 subscribers and a lot of influence on the community. Which had seemed like the rule to be chosen for ambassador, but those lines have also become very blurred following one YouTuber's experience with the program. We have truly seen some bright and shining stars in Star Stable's YouTube history. Some have come and gone, and some have stuck around for the long haul. I want to bring focus to Corinne Misthill. You may remember her as a Hungarian Star Stable YouTube sensation, as her videos brought us near-weekly updates and TikTok compilations. Corinne started her YouTube journey in the fall of 2016. Her videos bridged us into the newer era of Star Stable content as we were shifting our interest from movies and music videos to update videos and training horses. Over her several years on the platform, she garnered more than 80,000 subscribers and was an overall positive influence on the community. I think she sounds like a perfect candidate for ambassador. The community adores her and her content is overall bringing lots of attraction to the game. I don't see why not. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Hold on. What? What do you mean breaking into locked areas? People have been doing that for years. Why now is it an issue? That used to just be a casual Tuesday for me and my friends. What? Blacklisted? Harassed? Over a locked area? Going into 2017, after the release of the long-awaited Jorvik City, it was hinted that the next area would be expanding beyond Firgrove. This area, what we know now as Mistfall, had been closed off by a dark cave and a long mountain range since the debut of the game. And many players had been glitching into the area for years. More specifically, players glitched into the area to get a look at Horse Island from afar, when the feature still existed. If you are a Star Stable player of any era, you know how exciting it can be to sometimes break the rules and glitch into closed areas. Especially if you join the game back when the map was a lot smaller. There are hundreds of videos dating way back before 2017 of players glitching into areas like Epona, Horse Island, Mistfall, the Castle in Golden Hills, Pandoria, South Hoof, etc. Star Stable never personally responded to any of these videos. If you were caught, you would just get the basic warning of you are in a restricted area and will be sent home. Message in game. Creating videos of something so abnormal as a closed area, something that has not been introduced by the company themselves, built extreme hype over what's to come with this new place. A concept that cannot be achieved by just any regular player because it is not technically accessible to the general public. These types of glitching videos get major views because everyone wants to know what is behind that gate. The hype, the excitement, the anticipation is all very good promotion for the game. I think that is personally why SSO lets new horse breed spoiler videos slide, like what we see with CC Creations and other similar spoiler YouTubers. Of course, it is against the terms of service, but as long as it's promoting the game and building hype around their new product, they don't care. So, what was the problem with Corinne joining this already existing craze in 2017? Why did SSO have to personally blame Corinne for the delay of a new area just because she made a video exploring a premature mistfall? Was it because she had a massive following that may be influenced to break the rules too? I don't think that's it. They like people with massive audiences because it helps direct traffic to the game. Why did SSO have to make an example out of Corinne's actions that ultimately led her to receive harassment from the community? Just want to pop in here and say that... As of March 22nd, 2023, um, 
You can now access closed areas without warning. There is no consequence for exploring a closed area anymore. They just kind of opened up the entire map to everyone. So what was the point of blaming Corinne for the delay of this fall in exploring an unopened area? What? Am I going to delay the next new area to 2030 now that I'm riding around in this closed area on my crusty fjord? It's really embarrassing that Star Stable Online has always had it out for Corinne. Whether it be suspending her account for a week because she did what many other players at the time were doing, blacklisting her from becoming an ambassador even though she fit all of the requirements, not to mention the community were literally begging Star Stable Online to make Corinne an ambassador. Taking petty digs at her and saying that she is a disappointment in the name of Star Stable Online. It wasn't a good look for SSO, but it pretty much sets an example of who they are as a company. The main focus of this entire documentary is the fact that Star Stable Online YouTubers, much like Corinne Misthill, have basically contributed to the entire game's financial worth over the past 12 years by making YouTube videos of the game and this is how the company repays them. Of course, I always have to make this quick disclaimer in all of my documentaries. If any of my information is incorrect, please reach out to me. I know I can explain things poorly. It is hard for me to put my thoughts to words most of the time. Most of the ambassador information I displayed came from a short series on YouTube made by extremely talented creators, Daniela Moonstar and Rattle. What I said doesn't even begin to cover all of the pressing issues in regards to the ambassador program, but I didn't want to just copy paste the series for word for word. So if you would like to educate yourselves further on the history of the program, please go and check out their short series. I will leave links in the description. Undoubtedly, social media played a huge part in Star Stable Online's success. YouTube and blogs were the main outlet of achieving SSO fame in the beginning. It won't be until 2015 when we would start to expand. Almost every SSO YouTuber wasn't just limited to YouTube. They had their blogs and Facebook, but the engagement that came from Facebook and web domains wasn't enough. In 2015, we saw the rise in popularity on SSO Instagram, mostly in the art category. SSO artists were huge on Instagram, one example being Christelle Hockley. To this day, she has over 60,000 Instagram followers and is without a doubt the most well-known Star Stable artist. Star Stable took advantage of the game's popularity on Instagram and made several open contests via hashtags on the platform, which only expanded the Instagram population for the game even more. Now, how's the health of SSO Instagram in today's day and age? Well, I'd say it is extremely well. So well that it seems like as if instead of YouTube, the SSO company has completely shifted their focus to the popular phone app. Now, how is the health of Star Stable YouTube right now? From what I've seen, pretty poor in comparison to what it used to be. SSO YouTube used to be everyone's main focus, including the companies. There used to be so much diversity, the population was so strong, now it just feels incredibly barren. More than 70% of the current ambassador list all come from Instagram and it almost seems like a requirement to have a page in order to be seen by the company. But even when the odds seem to be stacked against you, both parties are still very important. I wish SSO would start recognizing all of the existing talent on YouTube, even though most of it seems like a hidden gem now. In most cases, it seems like SSO has abandoned their YouTube community. I remember an instance where a player pitched an idea that ambassadors who are YouTubers should get their own red badge to imply that they are from YouTube. That idea was quickly shut down by someone in the higher-ups of either the ambassador program or the company, I forget. It's mind-boggling. YouTube, a platform that got Star Stable to the point they're at now, has pretty much been given the creators the cold shoulder in terms of recognition. I mean, no wonder why people aren't exactly inspired to make channels anymore. As the game grows older, and so do our accounts, it seems as if the game has less and less to offer us. And the company doesn't seem like they're jumping at the chance to give us a new game mechanic that will keep us engaged in the game. The last mechanic they introduced that kept us the least bit engaged, aside from temporary events, was Soul Riding in 2020. Of course, that is all just grind though, which gets pretty repetitive and boring. 
and seems like just a bone they're trying to throw at us so that they can say they gave us an update. So, what is there to do once your quest log is empty and account fully leveled? Train your new horses. Sure. Join a club. Can go many different ways, but club events can be fun. Clubs play a big part in what there is left to do in the game. But that is for another video. Make an Instagram account and edit pictures. Okay. Or maybe a YouTube channel and make a video. Sure. Soon enough, you'll find yourself logging on only to take a picture or make a video. You need an extra boost. An idea to keep you from being bored of the game you spent so much money and hours on. What if you could get stars that would recognize you and ultimately become a public figure in the community? So you open Photoshop, download a few SSO fonts, and ultimately find yourself climbing the same ladder that everyone who is bored with the game is climbing. Trying to maintain that positive attitude with every new update, spreading information that yes, there was an update, but what is your opinions on the update? That is a great update? New puppies in Fort Pinta that cost more than ho most horse breeds is a great update? It's not a great update, but you can't risk openly expressing your opinion that yeah, it might be a like lackluster update. Because the Star Stipple community is all about spreading positivity and helping each other out and emojis. It's all a part of climbing the ladder. Being unnecessarily cruel to people and being an overall stick in the mud is never okay. I choose positivity over negativity any day. But the thing is, expressing your constructive criticism as a customer of the product Star Stable Online is okay. Having opinions on what Star Stable Online is doing is okay. Because if we continue this endless cycle of everything is great, Star Stable is the best game ever and we're such a positive community, nothing will get done. The game cannot improve without feedback, whether that feedback be negative or positive, which is why I hate the to this toxic positive environment that is endlessly spread by the community and especially content creators and ambassadors. I like when people have a different opinion on a certain subject. If I were a game director, I take this feedback very seriously because without the customers, my product will not sell. It is so disheartening seeing these Star Stable influencers all repeat the same robotic lines of, this game is great. I am proud to be a Star Stable Online player. I love taking a stroll at Fort Penta Beach. There are multiple cases of huge Star Stable content creators that preach about how this game is so amazing and there's nothing wrong with it and how the team do such an amazing job and then proceed to be inactive on the, both the game and their Instagram pages for months on end. I worry about the new character update, especially since most of the beta testers are people who have little to no record of providing constructive criticism to the game. Long story short, it's just incredibly weird seeing how the state of SSO content creator community is nowadays. There are so many talented people, don't get me wrong, but for the most part, to get any sort of recognition from the community or the company, you have to follow the same sickly sweet editing style to be seen. You have to be creatively restricted, have no sort of opinion that goes against the game. Your content has to be bright and sparkly, and then maybe you'll have a chance of making it up that ladder. In the state that the game is in, the company deserves to have negative feedback. It is so blatant in every way that they care more about profit than the community itself. No matter if you have a sparkly ambassador badge, if you joined the game 10 years ago, or 10 months ago. They do not value us over their money, and it becomes more and more obvious every Wednesday. I wanted to include this next topic as I was discussing it with my family earlier, and it was sort of an aha moment. Star Stable the company knows how powerful the influence of YouTube is. They understand that they got to the point they're at now because of YouTubers like Alice, Violet, Dennis, and many, many more. Which is why I wanted to talk about the history of the company paying YouTubers with a huge platform to advertise the game. Who else remembers being a huge LD Shadow Lady fan in the early 2010s? Endlessly streaming her Minecraft videos only to open up your laptop one day to see that she has made a video playing your favorite horse game. To this day, the video has accumulated over 2 million views and is on its way to celebrate its 9 year anniversary on YouTube. This isn't the only time she took the time to make a video on the game. She went on to make a few more videos promoting Star Stable Online a few years later. 
This video led to many kids who were subscribed to her at the time to register an account on the beloved horse game and ultimately fall in love with SSO. This was a very smart move from the company. They attempted to recreate the stunt years later by paying YouTubers like This Esme and Lauren Z side to create an account and perform basic activities on the game, which I'm sure was ultimately successful as well. This Esme has garnered 1.2 million views in three years on her promotional video. It just goes to show how beneficial YouTube has been for the game. I mean, you're here watching this video, aren't you? Where SSO fails to compensate their creators, at least YouTube is still rewarding. Or are they? Around some time in late 2019, SSO YouTube woke up to quite a scare from the European government. YouTube would be introducing a new law regarding children's online safety and the content they consume. They wanted to make it a requirement that all creators disclose whether or not their videos are made for kids. This created a very gray area for Star Stable Online creators in particular, as the game itself is very much targeted towards children and always has been. Many SSO YouTubers had a stunt in their income during this period because those who listed their videos as not for kids did not make it onto the recommended page as much as those who did list their SSO videos as made for kids. This system has now been polished but still can be considered a thorn in the side of some and did turn many people off from ever returning to SSO YouTube again. I want to move on to a recurring issue that may or may not turn off some from this documentary. But it needs to be said as harassment of any form will never be tolerated on my channel. Many of you know YouTube legend Dennis Wisestorm, most known for his commentary videos regarding Star Stable Online and other horse games. He is now branching out to the model horse community as well. Dennis has been a staple in this community for the better half of eight years. He was a racing legend in Eastern Europe and has now become one of the most active Star Stable YouTubers. He has been a voice for the community for the longest time, especially those with more critical opinions of the game. Dennis has always been honest to his audience, which in my opinion should be treasured. Boys playing this game is not an uncommon phenomenon. And I'm saying this as someone who has been playing this game for nearly 10 years. I've met many boys on Star Stable. And I don't see why they wouldn't because there are a lot of boys at all the stables I went to in real life. I don't think being an equestrian is limited to a specific gender. But a common misconception from people who aren't equestrians is that it is a girl sport. I've always loved how SSO has empowered the girls. But at the same time, they are supporting that argument of equestri equestrianism being a predominantly female sport when that is just not the case. Star Stable, as a game, has helped me a lot with my own personal confidence. It was an outlet that allowed me to express myself for the longest time and the confidence it helped me build carried on into my real life. Everyone deserves to experience that. And it shouldn't be limited to race, gender, or sexual orientation. It's very discouraging that in order to be seen for who you are in the game, in this case, a boy, you would have to be limited to one specific hairstyle. Ever since Star Stable Online's debut, we have only had one body type as well, and it very much resembles a girl's body, which was of course their intention. It's just very misleading, and it really isn't what the boys who play this game deserve. Male players have received many variations of harassment in the past 12 years, whether it be little girls asking them to be their boyfriend or other players just straight up telling them to leave the community. It is all very much uncalled for and goes to show how hateful this community can be. I mean, we're all playing this game for the same reason. We have nowhere else we can go if we want an interactive 3D multiplayer horse game other than Star Stable Online. I can't imagine the amount of harassment Dennis has received from this community in all of his active years on YouTube. He has spoken about it on numerous occasions, but it doesn't even scratch the surface on how mentally taxing it must be. The company does not help by being silent on the community's pleas to end the bullying. They've been practically, practically enabling this behavior for years. Tensions really didn't start to pick up until the beta for the new characters launched towards the end of last year. 
when it was practically confirmed that we were not getting a male player model for the character update. Since then, many other content creators like Dennis Wystorm have received multiple counts of harassment and have been forced to private their feedback to avoid further bullying. The problem with Star Stable Online not making an effort to introduce male characters is that SSO is a game where you do not play as a selected main character. Up until a few years ago, the story was built around a girl's bond with her horse. They have now made the story more gender inclusive and has been redesigned to a person's bond with their horse. When you begin Star Stable Online, you are allowed to freely design your character to your heart's content. It isn't implied that you need to make your character look a certain way. And we all have our own names too. If they allow this much creative freedom with our avatars, why do they stop at our character's gender? Especially now that NPCs refer to us as they. There really isn't much of an excuse at this point. Star Stable empowering women is not the problem but how they are going about it can be seen as problematic. It continues to enable people to torment boys who play this game, as well as give little girls who play this game a wrong perception of the opposite gender. A lot of people also bring up the argument that trans men are quote unquote allowed to be here, but that is a statement wrapped in heavy transphobia, implying that trans men are not real men. Dennis is a very brave person to persevere with making content despite the constant harassment as well as continue to use his platform to highlight the not so perfect parts of the game and community. Much like other YouTubers we talked about previously, he has also done so much for the game's reputation by promoting nearly every update and continuing to be an active figure of the community. Dennis and all of the other boys who play Star Stable Online deserve to be represented properly with accurate hairstyles and body types in the game. Boys are not a threat to the game, and not a threat to the game's message at all. Star Stable can still continue to empower women through their story. If anything, the message will be more well received by outside audiences by including everyone from all walks of life. We are going to continue to ride this community wave for a little while longer as we are now going to talk about White Knights versus Dark Knights and how they affect YouTube. I'm sure most of you who are familiar with the Star Stable community know what White Knights and Dark Knights are, but if you are confused, I will pr provide a brief explanation. White Knights of Star Stable Online can be described as those who give little constructive criticism to the game, will actively shame those who have differing negative opinions about the game, they believe that the company can do no wrong, they spread copious amounts of toxic positivity, White Knights can vary in age range, but the majority of them are children who are unable to handle negative or different opinions. Dark Knights, on the other hand, are usually adults who have played the game for longer. They will actively shame you for supporting the company by buying star coins or just saying anything positive about the game. Despite their age, they are unable to see a different opinion than theirs and have, ultimate, have an ultimately pessimistic outlook on the game and life in general. Many people have asked me, who am I? Am I a white knight or am I a dark knight? And I hate being asked such a question. I feel like these specific groups of people are just further dividing the community as we have adopted a lack of being able to see each other's side of things. I've been labeled as a dark knight at times as my documentaries provide an opinion that is criticizing the game. It is very frustrating being put into a category because I am neither. I do not care what people decide to do with their money. I just hope that they understand the consequence. I will not actively hunt you down for providing positive feedback of the game. I'm always happy when an update is well executed and well received. If you have a different opinion than mine, I really don't care. I just hate this continuing split of the community by labeling each other as this or that. There have been cases of YouTubers uploading shopping sprees and people being outright disgusted in the comments, saying that they are the reason for the downfall of the game labeling them as a white knight. And on the opposite side of that, YouTubers who have created videos sharing the constructive criticism of an update and players commenting how ungrateful they are, labeling them as a dark knight. The white knight versus dark knight argument is just ammunition to further divide the community. Star Stable used to be a place where we could all escape from real life and come together to share the love for horses and mystery. It seems like both the community and the company have forgotten that motive. 
I could not create a documentary on this topic without mentioning the very greatest. This will be the last YouTuber I mention, and I'm sure you all have anticipated my analysis on her career. On February 23rd, 2013, Violet Flower Garden uploaded her very first YouTube video. Nobody could have foreseen the level of success she would reach. I personally have been watching her for nine years and she has grown so much. She is truly considered one of the original YouTubers. After her first initial video, she went on to upload several more mu mini music videos, events with her friends, championships, and many, many more. By the end of 2013, she had gained a massive following and was considered one of the stars of Nightstar. At the time of 2013 through 2017, she didn't really have a serious upload schedule, but rather uploaded videos for fun whenever she had an amazing idea. It wasn't until around 2018 when she had started to upload more frequently, as well as post content regarding new updates and horses. There was a time when she would post Minecraft videos with her friends, and I personally remember waking up very early to watch those videos and then build my own Minecraft stable. The community has always loved her. I remember the first day she created her club Flower Girls. There was a whole crowd of players surrounding her getting invites to join the club. Me included. I remember the first day I met Violet. She was riding the blue Appaloosa American Quarter Horse with a big starry jacket. She was so kind and funny to everyone who showed up. Truth be told, I was really nervous to be in the presence of all these really popular YouTubers, my idols, but I never felt as if I was being left out. She was always the one to start a trend. There are many examples of this, but one of my previous stated channels, Seven Star Stable Girls, was her idea. Many watched the events Flower Girls participated in, hosted by Violet, and would become inspired to create similar events for their own clubs. She is an inspiration, and even that is an understatement. When Star Stable was really starting to go downhill for me, entering the 2018 to 2019 era, I was so lost on where I stood when it came to this game. It felt like everything I had ever worked for in this game was erased. There was nothing left of the original makeup of the game. But I knew I could always open YouTube to a new Violet Flower Garden video and my worries would be put to rest. While all of my friends, favorite content creators, developers were leaving the game, Violet stayed. She is the very heart and soul of Star Stable Online. And I, I doubt we will ever see a star quite like Fla Violet Flower Garden ever again. To this day, Violet Flower Garden has 179,000 subscribers and over 49 million combined views, making her the most subscribed to Star Stable YouTuber to date. On January 17th, 2023, Violet passed away at the age of 23. It was unexpected. All I hope is that her family and close friends are at peace right now. It truly shook the community. After a while, I had realized that Violet would have wanted us to continue playing Star Stable for her. She would have wanted us to express our creativity in the same medium that she thrived in. Star Stable YouTube has been my life, my main focus since February 2014. I've never been so passionate about any other hobby, which is why I felt the need to create this documentary. Violet has been my role model. I've taken time to grieve personally, and now I'm ready to persevere with YouTube continue making documentaries and really thrive in my craft in Violet's honor. It is all I can do to give back to all that she has given me. Which leads me to my final statement. If you have ever considered starting a Star Stable YouTube channel, 
This is your sign to do it. The YouTube community is a shell of what it used to be. And it is discouraging seeing what used to be a thriving and creative community be limited to only a few people who are left making videos. I want to see Star Stable YouTube flourish again. It doesn't matter if you're making documentaries like me, shopping sprees, training videos, movies, music videos, just do it. Embrace the path that these YouTubers I mentioned in this documentary paved for us. And don't be afraid to be seen trying. This has been Kitty Spiderweb, signing out.